So, I'm in back of my office on my dying table. And um, we're just talking today. Let's move that in a bit. It's a shot about sewing, sewing a seam. So I've got a little left from the um, thumb cast on, which isn't an awful lot, but it'll start us off. So I've done a garter stitch edge. So I'm picking up the first bump, basically. And pulling that through and then going back almost like in a figure of eight to the bump on the other side and that's my first join I always leave myself enough to um, sew up at the end although this time I haven't given myself too much so I get my next garter bump there and pull that through and switch over to the other bump and push through that see so that you're joining the bumps together bump to bump bump to bump Yeah, that's not looking too bad, is it? Bump. Two bump. So now I'm getting into the stocking stitch. And this is where it gets a little more different. As you notice, I have a bump at the end of each of my purl rows so what I did was knit one purl to the end of the row knit one and that gives us a little garter bump and I do that because look at how neat it keeps the stocking stitch at the edge so now with my little bit of thread I'm going to the next row and I'm pushing my sewing needle through the first stitch in then I go to the next row and I push it back that way into the corresponding row on the other side now don't pull tight the reason I don't pull tight is because you will make it it just looks just wouldn't look nice Trying to keep it loose. I think this is what calls a mat is called a mattress stitch. Not pulling too tight. And I find this the nicest way to stitch up the sides. See, next one, always the corresponding row. Well, that doesn't look too bad, does it? Yeah. You can tell if it's the right row. If the thread comes out from before, you go to... Let's just have a look. Go to that one there. Etc. So now what I'm going to do is, is add in some more thread because obviously I'm not doing very much. So I'm just going to go back through there and then catch that other side there. I'm going to turn it round so you can see what's going on inside. See? There's a little seam and I'm just using that as my basis to take the thread off and what I would do with my thumb at the end of seaming is press it out thumb pressing so you can see what's happening there so this is a pair of shorts 
a measured from here to there that's with the measured it hang on let's just pull it down measured from the folded top down to the hem edge and it's almost 18. I am going to do about a five inch seam to 13 so I want to sew up to there and I'm going to do that on the other side too so if you want to come back to me when I've done that um, on both sides then we will join the seam together up the front so okay okay so I hope this shows up better um, I've put a little bit of a close-up on it this is where I am so I did a five inch seam there on one leg and a five inch seam there that joined so I've got a nice leg leg <laughs> I'll show you that bit later I've done the back can you see well actually I think this one's the front yeah because it's got the eyelets so I've sewn up the front so now I'm going to go up the back and I hope I've got myself a longer piece of thread this time now the other interesting thing is is I want the gusset to be strong so I don't care what stitches are in there and what they look like but that's what I want so now I'm going to put my needle through that stitch there and the corresponding stitch there and I'm going to pull it through then the next stitch there goes across to that stitch there Go through that stitch there and the corresponding stitch there. Making sure to, to pick the last last stitch before the bump on each side through the back across to that side just making sure here yeah. because you can go over when you've not pressed out the I mean the other way of getting around that is is pressing it out but I tend to do that at the end because I want it to be a continual side I find these things difficult to film because my eyesight's a bit poor so I'm hoping you can see what I'm doing here. And there. And oops, there. that one and that one I know I've got a long thread but I prefer that so now let me come back and show you the final scene okay so I'm now at that point where I've done back scene I'll give that a little rub my hand just to flatten it down a bit I've done the 
leg joins. That's five inches. If I turn it round. The front is 13 inches from the fold. Did I bring my tape with me? No, but the 13 inches is from the fold. So I've done that. So as you can see on the left hand side here, I have the holes for threading through the um, eye cord when I've done that. Now I'm at the position now where I can sew the casing and I will sew the casing all the way round including where the eyelets are because what I want to do is, is just thread the eye cord through that one and bring it out on that one so <laughs> this is the second time i've tried to film this <laughs> right so here we are when folding that down the left hand side there to this side here there's about 13 inches that's how i wanted it to be at the front I've done a five inch seam for the legs and there's a longer seam at the back. I actually didn't measure that. Okay. Now, I'm now turning down the casing. As you can see on the front, there was a garter stitch row before I started the casing. I use that as a marker on the other side. As you can see, that's the back side of it. And to fold the casing down and using the sewing needle, I would catch the back loop of the cast on and the top loop of the next row down. And as you can see, that's what I've done with the others. And I shall do that all the way around, including the holes in the, uh, the eyelets in the casing. Because then what I'll do is once I've done the eye cord, I will thread it through that hole and bring it out that hole. I might put a few stitches around just to neaten the edges. We'll see. Yeah, so almost one pair of cargo shorts. I said I might put some pockets on, fake pockets, we'll see. <laughs> see what mood I'm in with these. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to call them scorts because they look quite large to me. But that's until I get them on, of course. Try them on. But I'll just go and try them on now. Yeah, so I've just tried them on. They're not too, they're not tight at all. And they're not too loose either. Obviously, when I put the um, eye cord in the casing, um, that will pull them up slightly. And I think that will be just how, just right for me. Um, not too tight, not too loose, but like I say, scores. <laughs> I have made um, short clots before and it's kind of like that idea. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to be pleased with those, I think. So, what about the shoulder? on this t-shirt well you've got two good cast off cast off edges haven't you i've 
threaded my needle from what's left and I pick up the little nubble on the end there just to give myself a starting point and catch the other nubble on the other side. All right, sort of figure of eight-ish. Now you have this cast on edge and this, um, sorry, this cast off edge and this cast off edge. And what I tend to do is join them both together like that because you want to make sure that where your other stitch starts is there and your other stitch starts is there so you pick up that one sorry i'll bring that up again pick up that one and that one and join you make sure of course that your fronts your The inside of the inside of your work is on the outside, so to speak. And just check where you're going with this. So this isn't easy. Sorry. <laughs> check because I'm trying to see it from up here. Let's come over here a bit. Sorry. Right, okay, can you see what I'm doing? So pick up the next two loops and over and the next two loops and over. The other way you can do this is pin it together if it makes it easier for you to handle. Pick the back loop there and the if it'll let you put the back loop there and the front loop there and pull in. Back loop and front loop and pull in. On the other side, that's your, that's your, what your seam looks like. It's not too bad, is it? Right, you want to make sure that your garter stitch, garter stitch cuff is the same and this looks to be, so I'm going to just carry on doing that until I get to the short row that signifies the end of my shoulder. Seam. And again, you don't want to do this too tightly. You want to do this quite lightly. This is very fine. So <laughs> this won't be as easy to do. You'll be able to see better as you go along. There you go. See? Okay, so I'm just going to show you what it looks like on the other side. Now, I like that. See? I like that. Now, if you want to do kitchen a stitch, that's entirely up to you. And... And I have done it myself in the past, but I quite like this. So I shall carry on to finish that. Okay, now the pink cardigan. I have, 
I've, I saw up as I go along, actually, instead of leaving it all till the end. So I've done exactly the same thing for the seam using that mattress stitch. I'm making sure the pattern sort of matches up from front to back. The, the sleeve seam is the same. And the ribbing is the same as being you has been done in the same manner, picking up the purl stitches on each side to make it look as if it's a knit one purl one all the way around. The shoulder seam is how I've done it on the other on the t-shirt. It's just slightly off on the pattern, but not too bad. So you may need to adjust your seam slightly so that it all matches in, but it's not too bad. I'm not worried about that. Then I've picked up the stitching all the way around and to that halfway point there, halfway across the neck. And what I've actually done with that is, is pick them all up onto a circular needle. I had a few stitches here and that, I think it was 10 stitches, which I then proceeded to knit into the, every row, every other row, I joined to the circular needle by doing a SSK which is a slip, slip slip knit through the back stitch to join it and that's how I joined it. I have a I have a calculation that I tend to use for picking up stitches down the fronts along the back I just use the stitches along the back I don't even worry about that but when you're using the front edge to pick up stitches what I do is is my calculation is pick up four again I've been using the knit edge see I've got bumps garter bumps along that edge so I pick one two three four bumps then into the next stitch in between I put a stitch in there and then I do one, two, three, four, stitch in there, one, two, three, four, four bumps, stitch in there. So I'm kind of adding an extra stitch in and it just seems to work for me. Mm, I'm liking that. So now I'm just working up the other side. This collar is going to be... Um, like that. My increased stitches I thought I'd do as a lace one. So yeah, I'm quite pleased with that. So I'm halfway up the left front now. And then what I did with the sleeve, which is another little, um, little trick I do, is I don't do a circular sleeve. I pick up all the stitches around the sleeve and whatever the sleeve pattern says that you've got to have so many stitches before you start shaping for a sleeve, I use that number and then I pick up as many along that edge. Well, I'll have joined the, the shoulder seam first, then picked up the stitches from the, from the edge that I've not sewn all the way around. And then I do a garter stitch row. Yeah, a garter stitch row. 
and from that garter stitch row I knit down and I do the shapings in reverse with this one it's I thought it had quite a large wrist so I decided to just put a few double um, decreases in that row to make a nice thin wrist I'm going to put it on my hand see it goes over no problem but it's just a nice tighter cuff with a little bit of a slight balloon effect so that's on its way I hope to finish that next actually and then I've got a few other things in the pipeline next is um, the blue cotton here from Woolly Knits I've taken a little bit off it and caked it as so and then I've joined it together because I'm going to knit that as a kind of a double knit so that's the main colour but as I said I wanted to do some simple colour work for this one so I had some of this in my little the stash that my friend Jean gave me I've already used one and so I've actually blended it marled it together with one strand of the cotton so we will use that in a very simple very simple colour work nothing fancy just a very simple colour work much like the very colourful top I did to go with the tulips and the daffodils suit so we'll do that as a little trilet I think it's going to look good to be fair I've not got much of it so I can't do an awful lot you know what I mean so it's got to be the yoke basically so that'll be interesting to watch won't it so I hope you've enjoyed that little tutorial on sewing up your garments. Please will you um, have a go and if you're on Instagram, would you um, hashtag, what should we call it today? Yeah, hashtag sewing scenes up. Oh. Or I might think of a better one. <laughs> anyway, whatever comes up on the screen on this video is what we'll be using. And then um, post it up on your Instagram and tag me into it. And I'm Saoirse and Lilac underscore knit, which you'll find at the end of my video. So I uh, hope you've enjoyed that little tutorial today. If there's anything else that I missed or you'd like me to do, just let me know in the comments below. Okay, see you soon. What if the world had more of your smile? What if the wind could spread your love? What if your sweetness could reach everyone there?